how do we take the first footsteps out of our planetary nest and into that vast universe? Well, we know that we live on this world with finite resources, this pale blue dot. Everything we know, everything we love is here. But there's great news. The great news is this planet is not alone. We actually have an eighth continent. And the eighth continent is replete with resources. All of the resources that we utilize as a civilization came from outer space, right? Earth itself coalesced out of materials that were born in ancient suns, all of us, every atom within us and our planet. So imagine that as all of that wealth of resources congealed to be formed the planet, enriched over billions of years with asteroidal bombardment, all the silver, all the nickel, all the iron, all the platinum group metals, all the gold, everything that we need came to Earth. Well, it wouldn't be a good idea for it to come anymore, right? So every so often, this happens, right? This happened a lot in the early history of the Earth. Every so often, this, uh, there's a planet killer, an interloper that comes, and, you know, these asteroids make great biological planetary cleansers. Just ask any dinosaur. <laughs> they didn't have a space program. What we need to do as a species is to learn to become a multi-world species and safeguard our future as humanity, because this is going to happen again, probably not next Tuesday, but I can't promise entirely. Every asteroid that impacted the Earth, every kind of asteroid was also impacting the Moon at the same time, right? Every crater on the Moon is an ancient scar of an ancient bombardment of a comet or a meteorite. Imagine, you've probably heard, there are trillions of dollars of resources in every average metal asteroid. Imagine what's been accumulating on the surface of the Moon over billions of years. We know it's there. We've been measuring it with space probes. The geology of the Moon is very well understood. We probably understand the geology of the Moon better than we understand the entire surface of our own planet if you include the oceans. The game changer, the economics, the thing that makes the value of these resources of the Moon worthwhile was only discovered recently. The discovery of water on the Moon was a game changer in the last decade, not just for the value of the resources of the Moon, but to make the Moon a gateway to the solar system. Why? Because water is like the oil of the solar, water is like the oil of the solar system. Its constituents, hydrogen and oxygen, make rocket fuel. We don't have to take everything with us anymore. We can leave the gravity well of Earth and refuel in space. The Moon has become a gas station in the sky. If we learn to unlock the resources of the moon, it'll be the water in the moon that makes it economical. Here's the challenge. Our economic sphere, which began as a hunter-gatherer society, just limited to the tribes that we came into contact with, grew to city, villages and cities, and eventually there were coastal vessels, maritime vessels, technology that hugged the coast and connected cities, created trade routes. The economic sphere of Earth became global with the, of, with the invention of ocean-going vessels and eventually our aviation industries, and now we live in a global society. And in the last few decades, the economic sphere of Earth has grown out from the surface of the Earth to 25,000 miles, where up in space, billions of dollars of commerce happen through geosynchronous satellites, communications, TV. There's an economy and it's all commercialized. It used to be just the governments, now it's the private sector that operates. So if you imagine the economic sphere of Earth going outward, we have to continue expanding that. The next logical step for me is the eighth continent of our planet called the Moon. It's another 10 times farther. Our goal is to expand the economic sphere of Earth another order of magnitude from 25,000 miles to 250,000 miles. So if you look at this diagram, everything that's green on the top is that 25,000 mile economic sphere today. Everything that's green on the bottom line, that's where it is, but look how much farther we have to go. And from there, the asteroids are, another, are millions of miles out, expanding Earth's economic sphere. That's the mission of my company, Moon Express. As a private company, 
to learn how to create a railway, a transportation system to the moon to unlock the value of the resources of the moon by collapsing the cost of transportation to the moon. And we're going to start small. We're going to start, we're going to use our robots. We're going to make small robots, small spacecraft that can actually reach the lunar surface, just like the governments did back in the 60s and 70s. Today, because of exponential technologies and the collapse of costs, as, as, as hardware dematerializes in the software, as computation that used to take a, a room this size is now in our back pocket, all of these things are making possible for small teams of entrepreneurs to do what only superpowers have ever done before, to reach out to another world. The microlanders that we have um, are developed out of um, technologies that, uh, that arose just in the last five years um, that came out of the expansion of digital computation, uh, uh, of materials, of composites, of, uh, of software capabilities to simulate missions, and we were able to unveil an innovative new spacecraft that we call the MX-1. We unveiled it in 2013 as a spacecraft that once it reaches Earth orbit, so we go on a conventional launcher, we buy something from Elon or from Jeff Bezos, we go into orbit, and this little hot rod of space can make it all the way from Earth orbit to the surface of the moon. Then we had to see if it could work. So for the very first time uh, in the United States, and I think in the world, um, a private company took its little hot rod spacecraft. We went down to the Kennedy Space Center at the shuttle landing facility to see if this thing could fly. So for me, a wonderful journey back to the place where I was first inspired as a little boy, the Kennedy Space Center in that rocket garden, going back there with our own spacecraft 